Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sunday Experience Online. Hey Lila, what's happening? Hey Chris, I'm feeling good. I am so ready for summer. I can just feel already that it's going to be the best. <laughs> yeah, me too. This winter has dragged on for far too long. Um, you know, and it was so great to see everyone right now on Zoom. You know, sharing communion. I think it's just so powerful. If you weren't able to be there, why not join next week? The link is in the description box. And and hey, I'm so excited for Pastor Joyce bringing the message today. Yeah, she's going to be sharing such a timely message, encouraging all of us as we just get through this season together. And everyone, next Sunday, we really just want to take the time to honor and love and celebrate all of the parents. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity to share the link with your family. So I can't wait. Yeah, totally. It's going to be great. Uh, and by the way, if you didn't know already, Kids Time streams on our YouTube channel every Sunday at 10.30. If you've got kids, why not have them join? It's a really great way for us to invest into the next generation and to see them flourish into their full God-given potential. Totally. And it's so fun. Like the animations <laughs> are super, super cool. Yeah. But right now, come on, let's just really lean into the Word. I know Pastor Joyce is going to bring it mm. and let's enjoy some praise and worship. So come on, team. Woo. Dreams are small compared to yours Why should I worry about tomorrow When I know that all I gotta do Is trust you, Lord Every little thing's gonna be alright Every little thing's gonna be just
now in power covering your select like you've done it before but you do it again
Well, hey everyone, good to see you today. Thanks for joining us online and absolutely trust that you've had a great week. You know, this week we had a very special moment with our leaders. We were able to meet together in one of the old church venues that we've used in the past. And it was such a great night of faith and hope. And, and I mean, it's been 13 months and we've been able to physically meet with our teams. But uh, anyway, it was a great report and great spirit of faith, believing God for the summer, believing for you, believing for our church that we're gonna continue to move forward. And you know, I really believe right now to just encourage our church to understand, you know, it doesn't matter to God. He can still help us to move forward with a venue, without a venue. So we're gonna keep believing God and praying and we need all our prayers when it comes to venues to open up. But you know what, let's believe this summer that we're gonna still move forward as a church. Why? Because we can, because God's faithful. He works in us and He works through us. And let's believe God that He's gonna use you, He's gonna use me, He's gonna use us collectively and individually as a church to really just bring hope and purpose into people's lives, whether we're playing volleyball, whether we're eating and drinking and having a great time over the summer, God can still use every moment to really bring His goodness into people's lives. I believe that's why we're here. So why don't we just encourage ourselves again, unite around God-given purpose. And I believe when we're united as a church, God always commands His blessing. And I really believe that's important that we carry this summer together in Jesus' Name, amen. So spirit of faith in all that we do and let's never give up. No time to pause. This is not a time to get all comfortable and just relaxed. This is about firing up. This is about moving forward. I believe calling is where faith turns up. I believe calling and faith always go together. And I really believe God's calling is to be a people of faith who've got a great, great calling on our lives, amen. So that, be encouraged with that. We've got a whole lot of things to pray for today as well. People are believing for breakthroughs when it comes to their families, omas and opas, you know, just with the corona infections and things like that. So we're standing together with you for speedy recoveries. People are believing for pregnancies to get pregnant. Uh, people are believing for job opportunities to open up and just new doors to open up when it comes to careers. And so we're gonna believe God for that today, amen. And obviously our world is struggling in so many different ways. And one of the countries, India, we've just been standing together with a whole lot of, with sisterhood and a whole lot of other people around this world, just believing for God's goodness to work in that nation. So many people affected through this as well as other nations. But we do believe today and we stand together consciously, purposely to believe for God's Spirit to work through that nation and Jesus name for breakthroughs and for something to turn dramatically for the good in Jesus name, amen. So come on, why don't you join with me in prayer? Father, right now, online, for everyone that's joining, we unite our prayers together in Jesus name. And we ask for your peace to rule and reign. We ask for your wisdom, for people who are making decisions about their future. Lord, we ask for your miracle working power to work in people's situations. Lord, we're asking for new apartments, for new doors to open for jobs and careers and opportunities in that area. Father, we're believing for people that are not well to recover in Jesus' Name. Father, as we continue to take communion, as we continue to trust You, Father, we're believing for new doors to open up for us as a church when it comes to venues and seeing our church move forward. We're believing, Father, for an India, Lord, that that nation is gonna see a turnaround, Father. Lord, all the aid, all the support that's needed, all the prayers that are needed for the people of that nation, Father. And we're believing, Father, that we're gonna see an absolute turnaround when it comes to people's lives that have been affected negatively through this COVID season, Lord. So Father, thank You for Your faithfulness. Thank You for Your blessing in Jesus' Name. And there's a whole lot of good reports as well. I'm thanking God for all of these answers to prayer. Someone had a tumour that has been greatly reduced in size, which is great to hear someone's dad's operation went well and uh, someone's been trying to get pregnant for a long time and they've been successful. So congratulations to whoever that is. And uh, tax returns, this seems to be the moment where everyone's getting a tax return. So amen to that. And uh, let's keep believing God for people's lives to move forward when it comes to finances, when it comes to jobs and when it comes to really plans that people are trying to make their lives and move their lives forward, amen. So, oh, and another good report, someone passed their exams. We live in the nation or we live in the land where every week someone has an exam. So congratulations to those who passed their exams. And if you've got any great reports, anything that's been going on that's like real answer to prayer, why don't you let us know? Because it really just builds a spirit of faith and it's always encouraging to see what God's doing in people's lives, amen.
Well, we've come to an amazing part of the service actually today. It's our giving, and I really want to encourage everyone in this moment. And today's verse I want to share with you, it's a well-known verse. We've shared it many times in the past. It's uh, found in the Old Testament, but it's a great Bible verse that I think just really captures the essence of why we do what we do. And this is what it says, Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Bring your tithe, a tenth of your income, into the storehouse, so that there be, may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord. See if I won't open the windows of heaven for you and pour out blessing. So it's such a great verse because I think what that does, again, just lets you know God's intentions that the tithe, you and I, whatever the blessing we have in our lives, that we honour Him with it. And like we've talked so many times before, uh, you know, the tithe is returning back to God. It's not giving to God, it's returning. It's proving that you're faithful. It's proving that you can be trustworthy. But this is the point I wanna to highlight today as we consider our giving. I love that verse and that line, it says, so there may be food in my house. You know, it is God's intention that you and I, those who love Jesus, those that follow Him, literally are willing to use whatever we've got our whole life, as an offering to Him. You know, we worship God with every area of our lives, including our finances. But I love that the spirit of it is that there's provision in the house. That's what it's speaking of. And my prayer for all of us, and I'm really proud of all our church that have been so leaning in this season, faithful and honouring God, putting Him first. It hasn't always been easy, but there's been such a spirit of faith in it. And I'm really grateful for all those who have just recently started new givers, people who have joined in the last few weeks and the last few months who have started to put God first. And it's such a joy to see that happen. But that's the spirit of our house is that we honour God. And so this moment is about honouring Him. It's about putting Him first so that there is provision in His house. I believe it is God's intention that you, me, us, that we honour Him and that we bring our provision into the house of God so that the house of God has got the resources and it's got the provision to do what God is calling us to do. And I really believe that's something we can do. And I love that we can do it willingly with the spirit of faith in Jesus' name. So be encouraged today with your giving. If you wanna grow in this area, if you wanna know more about this, then feel free to let us know and we'll help you in any way we can. But I tell you, when you get free in your giving, when you start to honour God and to release and to bless, it's amazing how that blessing starts has to come back in, a, in amazing ways. So Father, I pray for everyone who's giving today, online or through the giving app, Father, but I pray that we continue to bless you and we continue to pour into your house, Father. You've blessed us and we wanna honour you. And we wanna see that our house, Hillsong Berlin, has the resources it needs to not just build the church in Berlin, but the resources to build in other cities like Warsaw and Prague and wherever God opens up doors for us. So Father, bless your people, bless us as a church. I pray for provision in every area, in every way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, feel free to use the giving details online and be encouraged today, amen. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. You can go to hillsongberlin.de slash giving or download the giving app on your phone. Enter the amount you would like to give and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, you will receive a verification code. Type it in and you're good to go. To set up a recurring giving, click the box here. And of course, you can also give via PayPal and EC card simply by following the instructions on the website. Thank you for your generosity. Well, I love the Word of God. I know so many of you do. And so this is a moment right now we're going to lean into the Word of God. And uh, the one and only Joycey, she's bringing the Word today. I know it's going to be powerful. I know it's going to really help build a spirit of faith in all of us. So why don't you lean in today, take notes, and let's have a great time listening to the Word. Joyce Wilkinson, come on. Well, hello, it's great to be with you today and I'm looking forward to sharing God's Word. You know, Mark and I have been talking and praying together with the staff and team here in Berlin regarding the season that we find ourselves in. And at the moment, there's one word that is standing out to us and it's the word shift. So with that in mind, I want to bring a message that will encourage us to do what it takes to keep our hearts and minds fixed on Jesus so that we can continue to move forward. You know, the word shift means to change. It implies that there is movement from one thing to another thing, from one person to another person, from one way of thinking to another way of thinking. And it does not imply 
stagnation or passivity. It literally means action, moving towards, towards something or someone. And in this day and age, there are so many things we could allow our hearts and minds to move towards. But right now, what's important is that we hear words that will enable us to continue to move towards godly purpose. And you know, if you're unsure about God's plan and purpose for your life, well, can I just suggest that you listen to last week's message on what's God's call for my life? Because I believe it will really, really help you. So, you know, as I've been preparing this message, my mind has gone back to the early 2000s when our kids were just two and four. And we would watch on many occasions, may I say, a Disney Pixar movie called The Incredibles. Now, I'm not sure if any of you know about it. I know some people here in the, uh, in the office have heard about it. We've been chatting about The Incredibles. But basically, it's about a family of superheroes who hide their powers because it's not acceptable to use them and in the movie, it's actually against the law to move, for, it's against the law for them to use them. But Mr. Incredible, the dad of their family, has a desire to help people. And in order to do so, he inevi inevitably taps into his superhuman strength. And then throughout the movie, we see all of the Incredible family using their powers. Mrs. Incredible has the ability to stretch her body. And in one moment, she's a parachute. The next minute, she's a boat. The daughter can become invisible and the little boy can run super duperly fast and so on and so on. You get the picture. But the reason I thought about this was because when they tap into their superpowers, there's a significant shift in who they become. There's a shift that changes them literally physically, but it also impacts those around them. So don't worry, I'm not going to spend the rest of our time speaking on Disney Pixar movies, but I do want to talk about a shift. Not an animated shift, but a real Holy Spirit shift that took place in the hearts, minds, and consequently the actions of those who were, who were around on the first ever Resurrection Sunday. A shift that is continuing to make a difference in the lives of multitudes 2,000 plus years later. And my prayer for you today is that your heart and mind will be stirred to believe God for a shift in your life, in the lives of your friends and family, the lives of your work colleagues and the world in which we live. Because we need a move of God. We need a shift. You know, our prayer, the Lord's Prayer, where it says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we need in Jesus' name. Amen. So today... Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the remarkable changes that took place from the end of the book of Luke to the beginning of the book of Acts. And oh my gosh, talk about a significant shift in the hearts, minds and actions of Jesus' disciples, His followers and the community as a whole. It is really, really remarkable. You know, they went from hearts, their hearts shifted from being downtrodden and heavy. Minds shifted from being in a state of confusion, despair and ignorance and honestly, as a result, miraculous things took place. So the book of Acts was written by Luke, who also wrote the Gospel of Luke. Surprise, surprise. And in chapter 24 of Luke, it ends with the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And then Acts begins with the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And what we see in this short space of time is a shift in people's lives, a shift that could not be ignored, a shift that you and I can still be part of today. You know, regardless of what's going on in your world, and there's plenty going on right now, isn't there, for sure. But you and I have been planned and purposed to be alive for such a time as this. And I, for one, I'm super grateful that I'm living in such a time. I'm super grateful to be alive on the other side of the cross, the side where death, hell, and the grave have been conquered, where Jesus, who came to earth and fulfilled the plans and purposes of God, is alive and well. And right now, He is seated at the right hand of our Heavenly Father, Father, praying for you, praying for your family, your friends, and our precious world. So I'm not sure where you find yourself today. Could it be that you're listening and you're in need of a significant shift in your life? Could it be that you are in need of a significant shift in your heart and in your mindset? Maybe because of circumstances personally or with what you see going on around us in our world, you have just pressed pause, as Mark mentioned when he was emceeing just now. But can I just encourage you to move 
forward. You know, we cannot press pause because life is going to continue to happen. And, you know, I'm reminded of a story of this beautiful lady that I had been looking after. She was in labor and she just decided that she was going to leave the labor room and go home because she didn't want to be in labor anymore because she'd already had one contraction too many, thanks very much. And whilst I tried to explain to her that that would not be a good idea, she, in between contractions, decided to gather herself up and head towards the door of the labor room. <laughs> Bless her darling heart. I let her go. And then as she was nearing the door, actually she got to the door to open it, she had another contraction. And then she just looked at me and I went towards her and she decided that she would stay with me in that labor room in the maternity unit and allow me to come alongside her and help her and give her what she needed to have a healthy baby. There was no way she was going to be able to put pause on labor. And you know what? We cannot put pause on life. But what we can do is we can go through life actually with each other, with the help of the Holy Spirit and move forward and make progress. I really do believe that we don't need to do this in our own strength. We can do it with the empowering of the Holy Spirit Himself. You know, God understands. He understands where you are at. So why don't you allow Him to come alongside you today? Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to your heart and, and have your mind renewed with the truth, the truth that you can apply to your life today that will make a difference. In Luke 24, we see how the women went to the tomb and found that it was empty. And in verse 4, it says that while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. And I just find that so intriguing that the men would say, why do you look for the living among the dead? You know, everyone that was confused and disorientated had been followers of Jesus, were actually followers of Jesus when we read in this portion of Scripture. Followers of Jesus whom He'd already spoken to about the course of events that would take place. But they had forgotten His words, which you know what? We all have a tendency to do, especially in times of uncertainty and times of pain. But for me personally, when I remember His words and His promises, I have experienced over and over again a shift in my mind and in my heart and my emotions. So let's just take a few moments to look at three areas that there was a shift, a change, a moving away from something towards something in these stories that we read. And the first one is a shift in people's mindsets. You know, on the same day that the women had been told by the angels that Jesus was alive, the same day Peter had ran into the tomb and found it empty, the day when basically everyone who had been part of Jesus' life were all wondering what on earth was going on, it was on that day when we meet in Luke 24 two followers who for whatever reason had left Jerusalem and were walking towards a village called Emmaus. We're told that amongst many things, they were downhearted, disappointed, discouraged, confused. And I'm sure most of us can identify <laughs> with those emotions. But what is so beautiful about this story is that when Jesus turns up, He never leaves us the way He finds us. And we can see that here too. I'm really compelled by the love and the humility that Jesus continues to show us in this story because, you know, He had just risen from the dead. Having suffered on the cross, He'd taken on the sins of the world, past, present and future. He had conquered hell, death and the grave. I mean, talk about a victory, a victory of all victories. And in most cases, when there's a victory, there's a massive fanfare and applause, you know, the winning player is carried on the shoulders of the rest of the team. But here we find Jesus not having all of that poured on Him, but we find Him simply walking alongside two disillusioned disciples who in all intents and purposes were actually walking in the opposite direction to where all the action was taking place. And they were walking discouraged and disappointed, heartbroken, it says. It says that their faces were downcast because as we read in verse 19, they had hoped that Jesus would redeem Israel. 
And Jesus started to walk alongside them and He started to talk to them. And He started to reveal to them what God's ultimate plan was, that His life, death and resurrection would ultimately redeem all of humanity. Verse 27 says, Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. Verse 28 to 34 goes on to say, And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if He was going further. But they urged Him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So He went in to stay with them. When He was at the table with them, He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised Him, and He disappeared from their sight. Verse 32, They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while He talked with us on the road and opened the Scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those that had been assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. There's so much here that excites me. I love that even though Jesus made to carry on walking because He's a gentleman, He wants to be invited. The men, the disciples, they strongly urged Him to stay with them. And, you know, I'm asking myself, am I hungry enough for God? Am I thirsty enough for truth to to actually strongly urge Him to stay and speak to me? Or am I too busy being busy? Perhaps I'm getting distracted. And, you know, maybe you're listening today and you don't understand everything or even believe that what you're hearing is true. Maybe you're like the disciples in Luke 24 where they think it's all nonsense because that's what they said in verse 11. But you know, would you be bold enough? Can I ask you if you'll be willing enough to say, God, if this is true, I'm asking you to stay and reveal truth to me today. And then there's this moment of them breaking bread together. And I love this. When I think of communion and how Jesus broke bread and it was at that time of breaking bread that their eyes were open and they saw Him for who He was. And if you are here and you are listening and you need to hear truth, I want to encourage you to take communion and ask the Holy Spirit to come and to reveal truth to you because He will. That's what He does. And that's what He wants to do in your life and in my life today. God's Word will shift our focus and we need to remember His words. And you know, I'm just gonna get really practical here and just ask you, what scriptures are encouraging you and strengthening you in regards to what you're currently facing? And if you need help with this area, can you please let us know? Because that's why we're here. We would love to help, we would love to help you. You know, has there been a moment in your life when you've had a reassuring scripture or a promise or a whisper in your heart, spirit to spirit, from God's spirit to your spirit, just encouraging you? And if so, did you write it down so that you could refer back to it when you needed to? You know, for me that I, I can just remember countless times when it's been tough or where it seemed of a particular promise is as far away as the moon is from the earth. But God has reminded me of the words that He's whispered to my heart. And, you know, I know that you can take courage today knowing that He hears you and He knows where you're at and He wants to actually strengthen you. In Romans 12 verses 1 to 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. You know, my prayer today is that you will be reminded of the words of God, the goodness of God, His love for you and His promises over your life, that you'll be reminded that there is a God in heaven who loves you, who values you, that He gave His finest, His one and only Son for your salvation so that you will know why you've been born and that you'll remember what He thinks and has told you through His Word. And then the second point The second shift that is very evident is there was a shift from being full of fear to being full of faith. 
You know, it hadn't been that long ago when all the disciples had fled in fear as Jesus was arrested. But in Acts 2 verses 14 to 40, we see them, especially Peter, full on going for it and sharing what had happened to Jesus, why He came and what He had done, why He died and rose again. And He exalted the people that were listening to respond to the message of salvation. And they did. In verse 38 to 41, it says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to you, your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptised and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. And then, you know, it continues as we read Acts, it continues, they were thrown into jail for their faith. They were thrown into jail for believing and preaching the name of Jesus. And yet they would continue to come out of jail and carry on. So they literally went from being full of fear to being full of faith. And then the third point, the third shift that we see is a shift from being ashamed of the name of Jesus to understanding the power of the name of Jesus. You know, before we read how they were shamed and scared of being associated with the man named Jesus. And then afterwards, they got this revelation that actually compelled them to pray for the sick and see them healed in the name of Jesus. And we can see that when we read Acts 3 verses 2 to 10, Peter and John, they went into a temple and they saw a man who had been lame from birth. He was now 40 and he would be brought to the temple every day and he would be asking and begging for money. But Peter, he went there and he said, you know what, silver and gold I don't have. I don't have a short term fix for you. I have a long-term fix for you. And that is found in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he took him by the hand and he said, silver and gold I don't have, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that man who had been lame for 40 years, he rose up and he walked. And the Bible says he was leaping and dancing and praising God. They discovered the power of the name of Jesus. And you know, you and I have that name today. We have the name that is above every single name, the name of Jesus Christ Himself. And we can use His name in the world. We can use His name in the times that we are living in. We can use His name in prayer to see miraculous things unfold in people's lives. Seriously, I believe if a shift happened back in the days of Pentecost. If it's happened before, it can happen again. I believe with all of my heart that we can have a shift in our mindset. We can have a shift from fear to faith, and we can have a shift when it comes to our understanding of the mighty name of Jesus. So as I bring this message to a close, I pray that you will be stirred in your hearts that if God has done it before, He can do it again, and He will do it again. I believe with all of my heart, He wants to move. You know, we've been singing that song today, Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. If you've done it before, won't you do it again? And I believe He will. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit, heaven break.
to extend an invitation to you right now, an invitation to invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior. Now, I wonder if you would be like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, where they strongly urged Jesus to stay with them. You know, He's knocking on the door of your heart. He wants to come in and He wants to make a difference. He wants to shift your life from where it is to his focus to his plans and purposes for you. And it starts with salvation. So if you are listening to me and you'd like to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, then I would love to pray this prayer with you. And if you're also listening and you have walked away, having made that decision in the past, well, today is the day of salvation. Today, I'd like to invite you to pray that with me also. Dear Jesus, thank you for accepting and loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and thank you that you rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and accept you as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present and future. From now on, I declare I am loved by God, I am forgiven and I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, congratulations if you have made that decision. It really is the most defining decision you will ever make. And we are celebrating with you and cheering you on. Amen. So good. What a great message. And hey, if you just prayed that prayer and you made that decision, a huge congratulations to you. Seriously, that's so significant. Yeah, no, a massive congratulations there. Um, we'd love to get to know you. So why don't you click on the link labeled I've Decided in the description below and we'll get in touch and help you get connected to community. And if you have any questions about this moment and what it means, you can join Discovery Nights where we discuss all topics regarding our faith and the Bible. That will be happening at 7.30 on Tuesday night. Absolutely. It's a great investment into you personally, so that's going to be awesome. But you know what? As the service kind of comes to an end now, the Sunday fun is really just beginning. Feel free to join some of the online hangouts that are happening right after the service or go for a walk and grab a drink with your buddy yeah. because we really don't have to do this season alone. And hey, if you don't have a buddy and you want to get to know some people, just get in touch by either sending a quick message in the chat box or by DMing Hillsong Berlin on Instagram and we'll do our absolute best to help you get connected. Absolutely. Yeah, no, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe and we'll see you next week right here on YouTube. Bye. Bye. Just rhythm